food versus a natural health product. So there is a bearing, a potential bearing on NHP policy development as well as the regulatory categorization of products by industry. So the first uh, initiative that we'll look at on the food side is with regards to caffeine and food. Uh, the, uh, Health Canada has been trying to make consumers more aware of where the caffeine and food is coming from and how to either uh, minimize or monitor their intake of caffeine and food. So preliminary guidance for the industry on the labeling of caffeine content and prepackaged foods was published on March 19, 2010. So currently there's no regulatory requirement to declare caffeine content in foods. This is, uh, industry is being encouraged to voluntarily declare the caffeine uh, in their products. So this refers to added caffeine, whether it's added as a food additive or it's inherent in an ingredient such as guarana or cola nut. So they're uh, encouraged to provide the content, the total content of caffeine in a serving of stated size. So the information contains caffeine, X milligram would be uh, placed outside of the nutrition facts and directly below it. So you would see caffeine content, X milligrams per serving size, and the serving size would be stated. If this is a product, and we'll see in a minute that there's an interim marketing authorization expanding the use of caffeine in some food products. So if this is a product that contains caffeine, has now had caffeine added, did not historically have caffeine added, then you must put a statement to the effect of ca contains caffeine on the principal display panel. So again, this is voluntary labeling that is being encouraged on the food side. Comments are being accepted by the food directorate. If you do make a comment in an email, please put caffeine labeling in the subject line. And there's the address that you can send your comments to. As mentioned, there's an interim marketing authorization that is being issued to permit the use of caffeine and caffeine citrate in carbonated beverages. At this point in time, only cola-type beverages are allowed to contain caffeine, and that's at a level of use of 200 parts per million. So this interim marketing authorization will allow other caffeinated, or sorry, other carbonated beverages to contain caffeine at a level of 150 parts per million. And the date of effectiveness is once it's published in Canada Gazette Part 1. It's not there yet. There's also an initiative to review the labeling of food colors. Uh, the stakeholder consultation is running from February 18th to May 4th, 2010. The interest in this is due to uh, evidence showing adverse effects uh, linked to specific food colors. So right now, manufacturers only need to put color in their list of ingredients. It's up to them if they want to indicate the specific color or not. So the proposal uh, is that most, if not all, individual colors would be required to be identified on the label, thus facilitating informed consumer choice. So if they wanted to stick stay away from a specific uh, red color, it would be identified in the label as by the name, not just by the generic term of color. So again, we're looking at this potentially in, uh, as its impact and carryover into the NHP regulations. Again, this is where you can find the consultation. This is just uh, information. It's Canada's food guide, uh, the guide that educators, uh, health practitioners, health professionals use to guide the diets of Canadians. They're just reiterating uh, the importance for pregnant women of taking a daily multivitamin that has 0.4 milligrams of folic acid and 16 to 20 milligrams of iron. Uh, it's taken a while for Canada's Food Guides and Health Canada to acknowledge the role of supplements in a healthy diet, so it's important to note and um, it's a good reference point for selling products. Other initiatives on the food side, uh, the Food Directorate of Health Canada recently held a one-day think tank to look at policy direction related to expanding the voluntary addition of vitamins and minerals to foods. And again, this has been a limiting factor and one that has uh, forced several companies to, to apply for product license applications for their products as natural health products because of the lack of flexibility of adding vitamins and minerals to food. So it's Dicentra um, also had a representative at this think tank and uh, provided input from the industry's perspective. And it's expected that results of this uh, think tank will be published by June 1st, 2010. 
So again, we're hoping to see some increased flexibility in the fortification policy from the food side. Another department is also looking at regulatory barriers in terms of health claims for food. So Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada is working with Health Canada to help facilitate the increased use of health claims for food. Uh, they recently held a workshop looking at antioxidants and foods and what bioactives were important, antioxidants, what information was available to support a health claim, whether it was a generic health claim or a specific health claim. So it's interesting to note that um, other departments are, are trying to move the process forward and provide support and in some cases dollars for Health Canada to host workshops and look at the information available to support increased health claims for food. And other updates. Just make a brief mention of the hazardous waste programs that are being initiated in Ontario as well as Manitoba. This is specifically looking at uh, special waste generated from households and trying to divert it from landfills. So pharmaceuticals as well as natural health products are uh, encompassed by household hazardous waste. And the point that needs to be made is that industry is being required to share in the cost of diverting this waste from landfill and in the cost of recovering, recycling, or disposing of this material. So there will be increased costs of business. So I would recommend that you look at the, the website. Regulations were passed in Manitoba. Uh, there are still discussions underway, as well as in Ontario discussions are being, still being held. So um, have a look at the websites and probably contact your industry associations to see what they're doing on your behalf. Nanomaterials, again, relatively new term over the last few years. There are currently no explicit references to nanomaterials in any of the acts or regulations administered by Health Canada. They've put forward a policy statement um, regarding a draft working definition, how they would identify nanomaterials. So this will establish a transparent working means of identifying nanomaterials, as well as laying the framework for a consistent set of approaches to nanomaterials across the department. Their working definition has been intentionally made broad, but it will be applied more specifically in each regulatory program area. So again, this consultation is open for comment until the end of August, and you can see the email where your comments should be sent to. Broadcast advertising. Advertising Standards Canada is one of several agencies recognized by Health Canada to review and accept broadcast advertising. They've recently published new guidance to help stakeholders gain a better understanding of which commercials require clearance, as well as the key steps in getting a children's commercial to air. So you can find this document, the Children's Broadcast Advertising Guideline, at the following website. And just a note that any um, only licensed products, licensed natural health products, will be reviewed and cleared for broadcast advertising by Advertising Standards Canada and other clearance agencies. So, Again, the importance of getting a natural product number as soon as possible. And that's it. Thank you very much. This brings us to the end of the Center's first regulatory update. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it to be informative. A video of this presentation, as well as a list of all web links mentioned, will be available on Dicentra's website within the next few days. We hope you'll join us for Dicentra's next regulatory update on Wednesday, June the 23rd. So please visit our website or contact us at 1-866-NHPEZ for more information. Thank you and have a great day.